one, excluding today, we need a one, uh, two, three, four sessions to complete. Uh, so that is uh, four more weeks, four more Saturdays. Okay. okay. So we can uh, June. I mean, I'm, I, my trips are now cancelled because of, and I, I'm not flying to Doha. So June third we can meet. June tenth we can meet, and uh, June seventeenth also we can meet. Okay. Is that okay? Sorry, team. Is that okay, or do you have any commitments on your end? We have noted down for June and June and seventeenth June. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? No, no. Is it okay with you, Sweri team? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So okay. that means, uh, let me count one, two, three, four. And how many did I say? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So one more I need to have. So that could be on, so 20, oh, 24th June, I am not free. So, and we have to go up to 1st July. Is that okay? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. Because uh, we have some leadership training on the previous week, okay? So from now till uh, July, um, July 1st, ec uh, we'll have uh, meetings except let me accept on uh, 24th June, we'll be meeting all the Saturdays. Is that okay? Okay, okay. thank you. I'll send a message also, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dr. Tony. thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I'll leave, sorry okay. about this. Take care. And I'm Take care. really Take care missing, this, missing these sessions, actually. Uh, it yeah. was, a, but then I will have a look at the recording. I, okay. I am doing whenever I have the time. So thank you yes. so much. Oh. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, folks. Uh, thank you for coming. It's a really great pressure to see that uh, you are coming every Saturday for this. So I was talking to someone. I've done faculty development in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, but not long. Um, so this is the one where it is full fledged detailed for the first time I'm doing for a Indian university or a school. So yesterday, Sujada Ji and others, we had a meeting and there was the CEO of uh, ICT Academy, which is a government of Kerala, government of India and private companies coming together to uh, develop skills. I've done uh, one day uh, faculty development uh, through that. And the CEO was actually my former student. So you can understand our relationship. And uh, I told him about you, that how seriously you take it, how um, sincerely you understand and uh, utilize some of the concepts uh, uh, in your day-to-day -day life, whether it is family, society, your students, workplace, friends and that is I really really appreciate that and i've shared that yesterday with a number of people so congratulations to you for being a, such a such a wonderful audience and really really thankful to you uh, you know for that okay you made us uh, implement life activities okay okay yeah thank you thank you so shall we move on yeah yeah yes, okay so, okay, so um, today actually we need to go to economics and economics is very important. I'll tell you, to tell you one simple point which I shared with some others, I, I always share. So in, I started my first company 2004 in Singapore, robotics expanded to India in 2008, where we got uh, uh, angel investment of 2.5 crores from Indian Angel Networks. That is the biggest angel networks in India. Uh, very big uh, people and uh, you know, 
the founder director of NASCOM was there, the top, top people. Uh, and then we started operations in Bangalore and we introduced the robot floor cleaners for the first time in India, 2009, my company did it. Most people, not everybody bought it and I had to exit in 2010. I don't regret it, <laughs> you know, that's it. Now, there was a time where, um, you know, we were all excited, we were all, and I got very good people from across India. I handpicked my employees from across India because I used to travel across India with my robots and they're all excited to work with me or with my uh, enterprise. And uh, there was a time I have to, I, when I was in Bangalore, uh, uh, there was a representative of the investors and uh, we have to get into certain kind of uh, deep conversations, okay? Which involved uh, various views and perspectives and persuasively putting things across. It took almost two hours. And then there was a point in time that person asked me, Dr. Prahlad, are you investing your money here? No. Whose money is this? Angel investors. Then you have to listen to the angel investors. It is not your wish what you want to do. Very clear, very clear. So uh, whether we like it or not, whether we think beyond money, uh, you know, getting the moksha and all, the, all those things, you know, but always money plays a big role and uh, very crucial. Uh, great companies are made with money and uh, companies could not become great because of lack of money. So money is very crucial. So I do a few things before starting this because this is a very serious thing, extremely serious thing. Um, I am involved in several things. Uh, so I need to manage my cash flow, my salary, my other income and my expenditure, my travel, my investments in movies and startups and other things, social enterprise, etc. So in 2010, when I exited, actually I learned cash flow from my student. So today we'll talk about cash flow. And we have an exercise to do. And uh, my student Abhijit could not come today, so he has recorded it and give it, we'll play it back. Okay. So he has he's sending his uh, uh, apologies for not able to come. So my, my student and I learned cash flow in 2004 when we started our company. Of course, the student knew more than me and uh, I listened to him and, uh, and then I picked up and I learned and uh, I'm not saying I'm better than him or I'm, he's the best out there. I'm not saying that, but we all learned. But one thing I did is 2010, I mean, 2008, nine, the Google started coming and uh, Google spreadsheet started coming. 2010, I started maintaining my personal uh, cash flow. And uh, I have done that, not the current cash flow only. I maintained all the previous cash flows. I maintain the current cash flow and I extrapolate to the future. So I retire in 2030. So I've done it for 2030. Okay, this was done very early, okay? So I will include what will be the inflation, what will be my increment, what will be my, you know, and here we get performance bonus also every year, annual appraisal, very serious business. Teaching based, research based, and service based, three pillars, they will evaluate, evaluate me and I get the uh, bonus. And so, and then my son's um, expenditure during his studies till he got job, and my Kerala expenditure, I have a very big traditional house, quite big in two acres of land, and 
maintaining that is not easy. I have to have four people to maintain it on an almost daily basis. So you can imagine the kind, of, this is not to really tell you that I'm great. Don't think like that, okay? I'm telling you honestly how you should look at your personal economics, very crucial. And then <clears throat> uh, I have a rubber estate in Kerala and I get income from there. So I need to utilize all this. Now, the point is that rubber estate maintaining is very, <clears throat> we have to be very careful during summer. It's a single spark of fire, the entire thing will <clears throat> burn. So we have to put a fire belt <clears throat> around it. Fire belt is simple. <clears throat> if some, if the fire will spread only when there is something to catch fire. If you remove everything, then it is a belt. It's a safety net. So we have to do that. And we have to also bring in helicopters to really spray the, 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 you know, the pesticides and other things. You know? So, so much is there. I, I'm trying to say the gravity of the problem to really in the need for it. So what happens is that I can predict what is my future expenditure. I know which month in say 2028, I may have a dip. <laughs> then I can plan towards it. And there was a time, my extreme bad time was in 2017, where, you know, um, to, to tell you uh, bluntly to under, make you understand the seriousness, I have to take loan from bank in India and Singapore to really survive that social enterprise. And you don't believe it, you know. I had my EMI, monthly EMI, five lakhs, five lakhs per month. And I had to survive with that for three years, okay? So you can imagine, and I depleted everything. I became almost bankrupt, okay? But I used to sleep every day, eight hours. No <laughs> heart <laughs> losing a pinch of my beat because I could predict it. So I prepared for it. And there was a time in one month in 2017, not monthly, I did daily tracking, daily tracking, because your salary comes on a particular day in a month, but your outflow will happen before that. So you'd really each and every day in that month, actually I calculated it and I asked my friend, I need 15,000 Singapore dollars to survive this month. And he gave me that. And, you know, it is just that $15,000, which I can give back the next two months time, I survived. But if I don't have that 15,000, I will really go down. I cannot come out of it. Very difficult, that's a problem. So you, it is teaching time saves nine. This I realize in my personal life. So my suggestion, why I am giving vehemently, persuasively, I'm saying this is, we have to be very scientific, prudent, and plan for our finance, for our, our, our mental peace, our, our children's education. And this is very crucial. So there was a time my wife will come and she's outside, she's not listening to me. She'll come and beat me up and down. I used to switch off every light which are not used. Only one air con, <laughs> Singapore is very hot. And if I get up to the toilet, the first thing my hand will go, switch off the fan. Go out, even if it is two minutes to come back, I switch it off. That's the kind of prudence I did at that time. By the way, I'm continuing it, okay? <laughs> Even, <laughs> because that is something, uh, and my son got irritated sometimes. Dad, you come out of it. <laughs> Live your life, man. <laughs> yeah. So that's the way, okay? So uh, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, we have to really be very careful to say no to oneself. Say no to your spouse. Say no to your children to say no to your family, especially when it comes to finances. So in the leadership training, 
<clears throat> when we get corporate trainees for my student leaders, my staff, one session is, one full day session is how to say no. We don't know how to say no. The early you start learning how to say no to yourself, your family, your friends, the better. So I'll tell you one another example. I, I have somebody employed and this person was working from home for a long time. And then we suddenly have to work from the lab and uh, hardware is there and oh, not very happy. So trying to come up with different ways to really avoid working in the lab. <laughs> so I, I, there was a time I said, no, no means no. I did not elaborate. You should not elaborate, you should not justify. It's a no. No means no, it's not anger. It is not displeasure. It is not anything negative. It's no, it's a positive no. So you should know what is meant by a positive no. And this is very important for us because when I say no to me, I should not feel hurt. I should not feel bad. You know, I should be saying to me in a positive manner, Prahlad, you should not do this. Don't get hurt yourself. Don't hurt anybody else, but you have to accept no. <laughs> you know, that's a beauty of understanding. Uh, I, I learned from cash flow. I, I learned from enterprise and into my uh, life. And uh, so we have to practice all these things in our personal life, okay? So, so far what we have seen uh, uh, is planning, concept development, system level design, how to go about detailed design. We don't go into the hardware or software aspect of it today. I mean, in this program, that is the engineering aspect or science related testing and refinement. We don't do that. Ramp up is to make it pro produce hundred thousands of something or 1 million or 1 billion. Uh, you know, that scale up is very important. I talk about that later, specifically on the hardware. You know, all these, you have to really know when to say no to yourself. So go, no go decision gates should be there uh, all along. So but it determines whether a project is worth all the effort and uh, whether investment should be halted now or not. So the criteria for decision, such a decision, is set by the organization, which is tailored to the needs of the business. How do you evaluate that? So, and the process, we should be able to determine whether the company will move ahead with the process or not. So I can give two examples. So my company, Floor Cleaning Robot, in India, Bangalore, we decided, I think the investors decided, we were selling, but the selling was happening in a manner which was not picking up. I'll talk about that later. The curve was not exponential. It was more linear. And the slope of that linear, uh, you know, sales were not so good or not so attractive. So there is an issue with that because you invest so much and you have to get that money in a short period of time. That's why the exponential growth is required. If you don't do that, it's not worth investing further. So if you if it is going at a low pace, then you have to put in more money for a longer period of time to get your initial investment. But then when you get the, your initial investment, whatever you spent for continuing the sales, when, when do you get it back? So there will be a loss. So there, anyway, there will be a loss. So whatever you lost is lost. So don't make further losses don't make further investment. So this is the most crucial part of it. So, and that is one part of it. The other is from the point of view of uh, design, then development, uh, you have to do certain trade-offs. Avoid doing certain things or do it in a different manner. And I'll talk about that towards the end. So which factor or variable or design aspect is sensitive, which is less sensitive, which is more sensitive. So we'll talk about that to a second, okay? Then we'll find, finish today with an example using Excel sheet. 
Abhijit has done it and then that video will be there. Okay? So we all know certain things come and go. So I remember my grandfather, I don't know whether this I told you, he used to use the rice husk, burned rice husk for cleaning the tooth, okay? And he used to add uh, pepper into it, salt into it. Also, there is a root uh, which you we get from the, you know, from the, from the villages and all that. You add to it, it will be sweetening it, sweetening. So the, the root is sweet. I mean, it's not eating sweet, but uh, it's, if you add that, grind it and add it, it will become sweetened. So he used to have a very good product at that time. And I used to enjoy it. And then uh, Colgate and other toothpaste came. You know, what did they announce in the beginning? White teeth require white paste, not black rice husk. So marketing, everybody went for it. And several years, decades back, in 1990s, if I remember, there was an advertisement, you may search for it. They brought in charcoal paste, charcoal embedded or inserted one, you know, and salted paste. They went back completely 180 degrees, okay? So there are a lot of such things happen. The reason is that if you have the white uh, Colgate, I'm give, taking it as example, it will start selling and it will reach a point where it will be stabilizing. But people want change. There is something called law of diminishing marginal returns. That's why, you know, you have different kinds of masala teas, different kinds of doshas, different kinds of biryani, different all kinds of things you add. If you keep on eating the same biryani for breakfast, lunch, afternoon, and supper, you will not like it because we need to change. That's why we have pickle, the pickle. The pickle really resets our tongue uh, and tongue sensitivity. And then we can eat more, right? So if you look at the Kerala uh, you know, meal, you may have 30, 40 items and you have to eat all that and stomach will get full. Then three or four payasams, so the dessert towards the end. So what do you do? Take a pit, pickle, touch it, eat payasam, take again, then you'll feel like eating more. So this is a diminishing marginal return. So if you keep on having the same type, it will decay. It will not continue forever. So you have a change. That's why Colgate comes with 20 grams extra, a different color, aqua, aqua fresh, color, all kinds of things. So that is what we need to understand very clearly. For example, a product is introduced, you have to spend zero meaning, uh, nothing is spent. Negative means expenditure plus meaning profit. So introduces, it will grow, then you, it will mature and then it will decline. So there is an introduction, growth, maturity, decline. And there will be people who will adopt it early. Some people adopt it early. Some people adopt it later. Some people will only start using it only when it is mature. And then some people continue using, even if it is declining, but the numbers could be different. So it is called the product life cycle. So if you look at your, um, in education sector, the different uh, uh, departments, it's a product actually. Curriculum is a product. So you have to look at it, whether your product is standing great, standing tall now, and how you have to modify it to make it, you know, that law of diminishing marginal returns I, I mentioned, you know, how to change it, how to improve it to attract continuous attraction. Name change we can be there, you know, not everybody is happy to do that, or you can have more electives, or you can change the contents, or you can change uh, you know, the first two years and the last two years, or you can, you can have different uh, 
uh, aspects of that. So life cycle, product life cycle is the progression of a product through five distinct stages of development, introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. The concept was developed by a German economics, ec economist, Theodor Levitt, and that was there, you know, as early as 1965. So this is, uh, uh, we have to be mindful about. Now, this is the most important part, the hockey stick. It's called the hockey stick. Hockey stick of what? Money being spent, money being made. And initially, for your R&D, you keep on spending. Technology can be transferred to a startup or someone takes it up. And then, you know, you, you make it available in the market. Then you start, the sales will start. Then sales will get. And then there was a point where whatever you invested, you get back. That is a break-even point. Then whatever you get is a profit. That's why it is called the hockey stick. And it's a chart characterized by sharp increase, increase, sharp increase, that's a stick part of it, after a relatively flat or quiet period where you don't get income. Generally observed in scientific research, measuring, say for example, medical results or environmental studies, it is the same effect is there. And in business sales, a hockey stick chart is represented by a sudden and dramatic increase of sales in sales. And there is what is known as value of death is used to describe a period in the development of a product or service when a significant increase in investment is required, making the risk of failure much more likely outweighing any potential future return. And the term value of death is, uh, you know, uh, alluding the difficulty maturing technologies through the demonstration and validation stage due to a number of barriers, which ultimately leads to a failure to transfer many new technologies to industry. So the, the, the most companies, so you might have read 99.99 percentage of startups fail. And it fails here. Either you start and the R&D is not able to give you useful results, you die. You cannot do that. So this particular, uh, you know, you remember this, no-go decisions, okay? So that is uh, uh, no-go decisions you can take. So you may decide, I cannot continue or you develop and there is a technology, you transfer, but whether you have the technology to transfer or not, that also will happen. Then you pass it to a company to launch a product. Uh, of course, it may not be ready to make mass marketing, mass production, uh, wherein you need to have further investment ramping up and then for more money will be spent. And then the product comes to the, uh, you know, the market. Now, all these stages, we can lose uh, money. Now, if you look at it, uh, uh, where was my company at that time? Okay. So my company, it was here and we released it. And then the sales was going like this, maybe much slower than that. So if, so I'll talk about that later, how much you spend, this is something like for my company 2.5 crore. And to get that 2.5 crore, that is not sufficient. You have to get more than that because this is almost, it was for two years. So the value of 2.5 crores here the value of the 2.5 crores there, the value of 2.5 crores because of inflation will be different. If you put that money in the bank, five to six percentage interest you get and how much you can get from there. So you have to get more than that. So whatever returns you get from here should be 
much more than the inflation plus interest rate combined or together. That is what business is. Most times people don't understand this, that companies are making a lot of money. Why do they need profit? Because then only they can sustain it. We cannot really otherwise have companies. They need, to, no, each and every company will have its own legal team, finance, financial management team, marketing team, engineers, and CEOs and CTOs and their salaries and expenditure for patents and everything will be there. And the building, rental or premise, owning, utility bills and hospitality, medical, so much has to be taken care of. Otherwise nobody will come and join it. So most, most of the times we miss the background. So I'll give you an example. Somebody came from uh, Kerala to Singapore after COVID, you know, allowed to travel. And this person made a comment that uh, uh, vaccine companies are making a lot of money. I think I told you this during the early time. I said, never say that. You are here to visit your daughter and, uh, you know, son-in-law as well as the grandchildren because of vaccine companies have made the vaccines for you and you can fly. And you know, to really make a vaccine, they have to burn billions of dollars. The, the laboratory requirements, the uh, various chemicals required, uh, various expertise to be retained. Uh, COVID will come and go, but we have to really pay the salary of top scientists in that lab continuously. You cannot ask them, okay, you go now and I'll call you when COVID or COVID like thing comes back. No. You have to plan. So you have to have money for all that. And you know, there'll be litigation also. There'll be patent related. And so much money is required. So if you get $1 billion, the cost could be one fifth of it. The remaining is for your future, for doing more. And I'll talk about something today. If you have, if you, if you're, uh, cost of making something is $50, the consumers will pay $150 and $100 is not for the original equipment manufacturer. It is for the channel, transportation, different agents and uh, taxes, different taxes. So we have to be very mindful about all these things. That's why I really believe everybody should be learning about cash flow, product life cycle, how companies make money, then only we'll be respecting the processes and we don't really look down. And that is very important, yeah. So this is uh, very important and uh, that is my annotation tool. How do I clean this? Ah, oh, okay, annotation, okay. okay. So, uh, my drawings. Right. So we'll continue. Now, there are funding, seed funding, early stage financing, peak funding. Uh, you know, there are the three, you know, major types of venture capital funding to support finance startups. Uh, there are differences, okay? So, uh, corporate R&D funding may be used internally for a company to really explore new uh, products or ideas. So, for example, co companies like Google, they spend a lot of money for this. And engineers are, there are a group of engineers or scientists who are given the freedom to really experiment a lot. And that is, such a culture is very important for some companies. And then there will be grants and tax benefits. So if you look at India, uh, so much grants are available, not small, very big, especially recently, the couple of years, 
So as I mentioned some time back, you know, my son and uh, his friend, they have submitted a very big proposal to DST and it's of the order of double digit crores. And uh, there is another group in Hyderabad, you know, also submitting. So maybe you must explore, you must explore uh, looking for such opportunities, grants you get. And there are two, three things to be careful about it. You have to uh, work with someone within industry or a startup, <clears throat> established startup or something of that kind. <clears throat> That's what my son did with his friend because they have established startups to work with. So R&D grants are very good and uh, <clears throat> uh, that, that will help. But I think if I understand the double digit crores in India now, uh, grants, uh, they require translational research, not purely you know, research for the sake of publishing. It is to be translated into products and is also creating more jobs. Uh, multiplying money and all those aspects to be looked into. So, and then once you get the seed funding and you'll work on developing the technology, and if you cannot really come up with a solution, then there is a, what is known as technology value of debt. You cannot really do that. There are a lot of things like that. It's not satisfying the requirement, okay? And, but if you're successful with a prototype and proof of concept, then you can demonstrate that and you can reach out to venture capitalist or, or debt financing. Generally, I don't recommend taking any loan. Loan is a legal uh, process where you have to pay it back individually or otherwise. So the liability is connected to the individual. So early stage fund funding, when you have a prototype, prototype or proof of concept, then with the early stage financing from venture capitalists, uh, you can demonstrate that it's a minimum variable product or you can do the pilot studies and demonstrate the uh, technology capabilities or scientific capabilities. And then uh, there will be a commercialization and mass production ramp up wherein you need to have investment further and uh, you, uh, software IT may, may not be a big issue there because uh, you, you copy paste, you, know? you, you do that, but you have to do that uh, testing and quality assurance. But if you look at hardware, you have to have more money required because the volume of the product will decide the build of materials, inventory to be maintained, shaped and quite a lot of taxes associated with that. So you need to have further funding, peak funding may be required to sustain. So, and then private equity or debt financing can be done. So we didn't go for private equity and debt financing. I did some money here for my company, but the angels were not ready to further inject into the uh, money. That's why my product uh, failed here or my startup. Uh, did not succeed. And when you get whatever you have invested back, uh, you know, you get back everything, then basically, you know, uh, you, you, you break even, it's called the payback time. Then whatever you get from there is uh, uh, your profit. So depending upon the product, depending upon the market, this will take months or years or decades. So some of the products will, may not be able to really make profit at all, but they continue operation because they have so much user base and user base is another wealth. You can sell it and somebody will buy it because based on the user base, okay? Any, any uh, doubts or clarifications, please do raise your points, okay, please. So I, uh, this slide really gives you an idea about the differences early uh, seed funding, early stage funding and peak funding. Seed is the first round of funding for startup to fund development of the product or service, to hire initial team and uh, generally provided by angel investors or venture capital firms. But the risk is more so Typically it is, uh, you know, I mean, this is a US 
you know, amount that I put, but in Indian uh, terms, it could be small or less. But I'll tell you that there is a very big uh, uh, one particular uh, service, which education sector, I cannot reveal the details. Uh, I received the deck and they are looking for uh, uh, 2 million US dollars as a seed funding. The seed funding amount will depend upon uh, the uh, you know, amount of money you require to really make the product success in terms of, sorry, make the product, you know, uh, show the proof of concept. Okay. So R&D to reach a point where you can develop it, okay? So it's, it depends. So some, so for example, 10 or 15 years back, Kerala government gave uh, funds for uh, climbing coconut trees to pluck coconuts, one lakh each. That one lakh was very good at that time, but I did convey that the one lakh is useless actually, in a way. And then that's what happened. So one lakh is big from the common man's point of view at that time, and they consider it is big, but it's not sufficient to really make a product to become, I mean, a real product out there. So venture capitalists and um, uh, in angel investors, as well as the uh, startup people should know how much money you require to make it successful. If both parties or one of the parties do not understand it, that is not good. So when, when, when people approach or I, I convey this message that I need little money, I said, why do you need little money? I can make it happen cheap. Then why do you want me? You make it, okay? And if you need me, you need to make sure that it will be successful. And so if the startups really ask for little money, you have to be more careful why they are asking little money. If they are asking for little money, have they done the homework? Have they really thought throughout the process? If they have not walked the entire process, this money will start off now, somehow I get it then halfway you will fall apart. I don't want to waste my money for your non-preparedness. That's why you have to say, no, you go back, come again. So the investors should know and the startups also should know. So that is the reason why education through the institutions, you should teach both yourself and your students to really do it. And many times, you know, the other day I was in a very big presentation. Uh, this is civil related and uh, we don't get uh, workers easily. It's very difficult. And within the first minute before completing, my fellow uh, professor was presenting. It's a very big presentation. 50 people were observing us, okay? So you have to imagine this. Pitching is very tough, very competitive. Within one or two seconds, the people started asking questions. And my colleague from civil engineering was very good at it, extremely good at it. I, if I was standing there, I would have failed miserably. He did it. And the number of questions came from the floor was so much. We were not worried. Not even a single, you know, uh, lack of heartbeat because we were excited. If they are asking questions, that means they are interested in this. If they are asking questions, that means we are making them to ask the questions. And we have to see it from that angle. Many times, startup people and teachers and the community and the public may not understand the value of asking questions. I don't mean the questions asked in the televisions, okay? No, that's useless. I mean, it doesn't really help anybody beyond a point, the political questions. I'm asking about right questions. So there was a question where he did it, the, the, my civil engineering professor, he did not think about it before, but it is related to robotics. I was sitting on the side. He could not ask me to intervene because he has to be spontaneous on the spot. He made an answer and that was correct. 
That was correct because the fundamental principle was used in answering that question. And I did highlight that after the meeting to him. And I said, I mean, uh, I would like to touch your feet, <laughs> make a pranam to you what you did. It's amazing. You know, he was a Chinese person, by the way. <laughs> I explained to him what is meant by pranam and all that. Okay. So we have to make, empower ourselves to ask questions. We have to empower our students to ask questions. And asking questions is, are, is not meant to hurt. Asking questions is not meant to diminish or not meant to see negative. It is to evolve. That is what is meant by Tharka. In Tharka Shastra, nobody loses. Everybody wins. Everybody accepts and it evolves. So Tharka Shastra is like that. This is what I really put across. Okay? Good. Early stage funding, second round, uh, to expand the team, you have to really understand the market and, uh, uh, and market the product and service and other investments in the business you know, expansion. Typically venture capital firms will be almost 10 times, okay? Like that, it's a ratio, okay? Again, it depends on the country and other places. Peak funding, third and final round, um, company to, you can take it to the public or, uh, you need to go through the process of uh, acquisition, merger and acquisition, m and uh, typically venture capitalists and private equity firms, then this could be 10 times of early stage funding. It's a kind of a ratio, one is to 10 is to 10, kind of. One is to 10 times 10 times, no? One is to 10 times 100 kind of thing, yeah. Uh, of course, um, you know, uh, uh, so purpose for seed funding, develop product or service. So I just uh, put it in a tabular form to easy to understand, okay? Yeah. Now, uh, uh, now there is risk involved. Uh, so seed startups, if you look at it here, you know, there are different stages of death. So when somebody is investing seed money, that means taking more risk the more to the right side is less risk. So somebody is coming here, the risk is much less, you know, uh, because it is proven, it is already there. So with more risk take, taking, less money can uh, get more equity in terms of shareholding. So you can ask for more shareholding. So st seed stage uh, riskier, and uh, then the other two stages, so funded in small amounts of money. That angel investors generally fund small amounts of money. And angel investors come together and pool their money. So uh, suppose five of us want to really set aside um, 20 lakhs each, that is one crore. And we want to invest that into say in four firm startups, 25, 25, 25 lakhs each, then out of four, maybe two will become successful, two may not. Even if two is gone, the other two, which has become successful, be able to get the money that we invested back. That 50 lakhs in two firms or 25 lakhs in one firm can give us two crores, then that is a success. So one crore invested, 75 lakhs lost, but 25 lakhs converted into two crores, that is equivalent to eight times. So growth is eight times. That's how you work it. So you have to have that kind of a mindset. You don't cry for the lost money. Work for hard for the money which you can transform into great to compensate it. So different baskets are required so that you spread your risk uh, in, a, uh, in a manner that overall there's a probability or possibility of one thing or other becoming successful to compensate for the losses elsewhere. And you don't want to invest in as an individual only. I mean, completely from my 25 likes, if I put it, actually it is risky because I can, I can then, uh, you know, service or I can really get engaged only in one company. My 25 likes is not sufficient. So what I do is, I get another four people, make it as one crore, 
distribute it among multiple companies. So my money is now spread across four companies or more. And everybody is spread across. So we are taking a risk across, but diminished risk. And that is the beauty of it. Industry, we have to be also mindful. Some industries are more capital intensive. For example, hardware, technology, you need more money, technology, because you need to have R&D and uh, scale up and ramp up, yeah? And also you have to be mindful about the market conditions. Um, you know, it depends on the economy. Now, India, you know, you have to understand this. I think, um, I, mean, I don't know how much of it is understood. There is going fastest growing. The kind of monies that we have is so much. One reason is corruption at the central government has reduced to nothing almost. There's no corruption because corruption takes a lot of monies. Okay, so corruption is reduced that day. you have a lot of money for it. And then foreign direct investments are very high, extremely high. So now is the right time to really do startups. That's why Atman and Bharat stand up India, start up India, making India. See, 60% of any product should be made in India. That's a mandate now. And that we should have done long back, 20 years back, to really make it. Because the people are there. The capacity is there. The intelligence is there. Is, is, is it because the Prahlad has left Kerala and came to Singapore, my intelligence suddenly goes up? No, it's the same Prahlad. There's no difference. There's no difference. Even if I go to US, I will become adapted to that. The intelligence, each one of you and me, we are all the same. We are all capable. We can do wonders, but it is the environment always that matter. Okay. So during economic downturns, there'll be funds may not be available. So that's what is happening to some of the even developed countries now, they are struggling to. So if you are a startup founder, um, understand the different types of funding available. Uh, and uh, you, need, you need to evaluate and have a uh, what kind of funding you require, how much that amount is, and what kind of terms and conditions to be looked at. So there is something called term sheet. And you need to really communicate that very clearly to your investors uh, in a concise manner, what is your business plan and which will be able to communicate and clearly bring to clarity to the investors your company's goals and objectives. Then only they will understand it, okay? Uh, that, okay, I can confidently invest in this. And maybe you, you, you have to teach your students to really go through this, okay? And uh, uh, there is analysis process, economic analysis. So basically, there are three stages, build, perform, use. So you have to have a base case financial model. Start with the base case. You have certain assumptions, certain objectives and constraints. So the inputs you consider, and these are the best estimates. We'll see an example, okay? Best estimates for that product to, for that, to produce a set of expected results. Then perform sensitivity analysis. I'll show uh, a tornado diagram today, uh, a very interesting one. Understand the relationships uh, between financial success and the assumptions and the variables of the model. So the relationship among them, we'll see, and we'll see that, we'll show how. And we'll, in the experiment today, we'll do that, the Excel sheet, okay? And use, Sensitivity analysis to understand the trade-offs. Consider the influence of qualitative factors on project success. So if you vary a particular part or aspect, more good, better, how it will impact the cost. And where you can compensate it, oh, I can reduce it a bit, okay? Certain specifications. That's why different products have different specifications. They do this sensitivity analysis. So uh, the product development, uh, you know, cash flow should be understood for this. Okay. So this is the investment negative. And if you flip it with a negative sign that is positive, just for the sake of uh, depicting like this. 
So there is a development time, there's a payback time. And when you get everything, whatever you have invested, that is a break even time. Then sales revenue is not your profit. You have operating cost, and that is not small. And uh, so you have to reduce the operating cost to get the operating profit, okay? This is a profit and that operating profit is uh, equal to the investment that is a break even point not here okay not here not this point okay so this is a cash flow so uh, business case analysis for or or for products or product economics the most common method is npv called net present value i'll explain that in the next slide so net present value analysis of projects, project cash flows. Base case model computes nominal net present value. Then you have to do sensitivity analysis or do trade-off, which will help you in the development decisions and also qualitative as, uh, you know, factors also influence decisions. So this is the only equation, one or two equations that we use net present value is known as the for a period say quarter half yearly or a year or multiple years so the periods so people talk in terms of uh, years and also some people talk in terms of the quarter quarterly that's why you have quarterly auditing and all that right so if you have certain number of periods, say so let us take it is um, four periods, okay? Four years for that matter. For that four years, how much cash flow you get divided by one plus discount rate to the power of four, period is four. So let me ask you, what is meant by discount rate? Any idea, folks? Discount rate. Uh, I could not hear properly. No, sir. Okay. But do you know about discounts in the sales? It is not that discount. Okay. In the sales, the discount is you boost it up, then you discount it. They will always get profit. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a strategy to change the pricing to a higher level. You know, I, I've, it is higher, but I'm giving it a lower, but it's actually higher than the previous. But the next time around, you can always sell it at higher than the higher, you know, that's right. It's a climbing strategy. So discount rate is, suppose I give you one lakh Indian rupee uh, now, and uh, you give me, give me back one lakh Indian rupee after one year. Is that good enough? Why not? Why not? It is not good enough. The value of money uh, changes uh, day by day. Yeah. So for one lakh, what you can buy now, and one lakh after one year, what you can buy will be different. If you just take rice itself, right? For one lakh, how many sacks of rice you can, how many kilograms of rice you can get now, and how many kilograms of rice you will get after one year? They are different. That is because of the inflation. So actually, uh, or if you put that one lakh in a bank, you take four or five percent for the sake of. Okay. What a, okay. Suppose you have a, a matchmaking. Okay. So, okay. So when I want to get married, I told my father, you find me a girl. I cannot reject a girl. I, I'll marry you, whichever girl you show me and don't make me to see another girl. Okay. That is my condition. 
So, I mean, so I didn't really go for the opportunity cost. <laughs> so opportunity cost is if you have, you know, sorry to say that if you have, if you're a girl and you have four boys, okay, that is the Swambara, you know, and then you go to Mahabharata and then you reject Duryodhana, you reject someone else, you reject Karna and you uh, accept Arjuna. Then the opportunity cost for Draupadi is Karna. The last one you rejected. You said no to it. Okay. Because that is the opportunity. You had an opportunity at that time and you said no to it and went for it. So your cost is Karna. Okay. That's the way it is. So similarly, uh, you know, you can invest your money in something, but instead of saying, uh, instead of investing in one, you invested in something else. So your opportunity cost is the one you said no. What you said no. The next possible option which you have discarded. That's the opportunity cost. So you need to be very mindful. So for example, investors, one crore, they can invest in uh, real estate. What they get after five years if they sell that property. They can invest in... Uh, shares, what do they get after one year? They can invest in uh, what you call the central government bonds, right? And what do they get out of it? They can invest in uh, something else, education or something of that kind, okay? So, so there is, the money now is not the same as the same amount of money after, after a period, it reduces. And also some investors will think, I have choices, but I'm taking risk. So I have to get 20% return. I may, so in IT um, uh, you know, space, the investors will expect a higher return because the risk could be less. But in hardware, the return could be lesser. I may expect 10. Then, you know, why not everybody is going to the bank? Yeah. Why not everybody is investing in real estate? See, why this Prahlad is investing in company? Because that is, that is to make you challenge. If you do only one way, if you, that's a law of diminishing marginal returns. If I invest only in real estate, what's a big deal? <laughs> if I invest only in movies, what's a big deal? So I need diversify. I may have multiple portfolios. So different people will have different discount rate. It may be minimum is your uh, inflation rate or your bank rate. So typically people go for five to 10. So if you look at the bank rate in Singapore, it is less than one percentage. You don't get much because people invest. And that is to help people to invest, okay? So different countries have different strategies. So typically you can consider, so today in the example, Excel sheet will show 2% or 3% or 5% you know, uh, and then you'll calculate the net present value. So in, uh, you know, in uh, symbols, it is a certain period of uh, time, one to N, uh, period cash flow for, and then one by R to the power of I, okay? That's how it is. So what are the inputs for net present value base case? You have to drop in development cost and time, testing cost and time, tooling investment and timing, how long it will take and how much ramp up, how much will be the ramp up cost and how long it will take, marketing and support cost and timing, sales volume and lifetime. So we'll take up all these things in the Excel sheet today. Unit production cost, unit revenue discount rate. These are all the factors. Now you have to be very careful target costing. Earlier I mentioned cost of goods at the manufacturing, then channel price, then end user price. Typically it's like this. So my first uh, robot, the floor cleaning robot, my bill of materials, the product to really come out of the original equipment manufacturer in China was $52. Uh, $52, I don't know how much was that. It's 40 at that time, 40 rupees or something. So that was, let us say for the sake of calculation, 
fifty dollars and forty. That was two thousand rupees. But the you know this the the marketing sales wing. The we were not marketing directly. It was marketed by another channel. They set the price at six thousand. That is three times. Okay, two thousand and. Uh, four thousand. Okay, so six thousand. Actually, six thousand nine. No, no, six thousand nine 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 something, you know, or seven thousand nine nine. I don't remember now. Almost three to four times. So the shipment, uh, distribution, and the uh, people who sell it, sell it, they all need. Suppose you want to sell. So there was in in my childhood, we used to make a lot of uh, you know uh, agricultural produce. You know, banana, tapioca, elephant yam, quite a lot of things. We used to sell it. So there was a time, um, I remember I was a child, uh, our uh, worker sold a banana bunch, a uh, full bunch to a uh, shop. And then somebody, when I was standing there, somebody came and asked, well, I need the whole bunch because there is some function. You know, we sold it for uh, at, at that time fifty cents, fifty paise, but he was selling for two rupees, just because it just landed there in that place. You know why? Because that shop has established its name. It is, it is he, that person is spending money for the rental, maintenance, and his time for creating that outlet. And that is marketing. And so I cannot expect, okay, you give me <laughs> more money for me, no. And this is a very important factor we need to understand. So I remember, I always say this example in my village in Palakkad, Kerala, I mean, father's village, uh, there was a small shop. And he used to sell beetle nuts, beetle leaves, and the, the, you know, the chew chew on the mouth inside, and certain books, certain yeah. biscuits, and uh, mitais and other things, you know. And I never seen him expanding that. I never seen him going, he took care of his family, he made his children study, his, he made his children marry, and they're all settled. Still, he continuing doing that. So I did not know. I did not evaluate at that time. When I became an entrepreneur, I started observing him, and I started respecting him. He needs to know what to sell. He needs to know when some item should be brought, how much of that should be brought, how much should not be brought, and at what rate he has to sell each and every small item in that small shop. He is a wonderful person more intelligent than a person with a doctorate. I respect him. So we need to, why this, I like this course is that we'll start respecting others, even simple things. And we'll be very mindful. So I did another thing also, my, one of my cousins, distant cousins did not study well. And uh, he got into bad company and later he realized that he got married and uh, that lady was very good in managing himself, herself and him. <laughs> and then <laughs> he went into um, selling, you know, what do you call chicken? Okay, I mean, growing the poultry farm. And I was wondering, what is this guy doing? And I, I mean, his father, I mean, they, they are all vegetarians in the first place. Okay? <laughs> they don't really allow any non-vegetarian item in the compound, you know, even my family, you know, we, we follow that very strictly because we have a lot of uh, gods and goddesses inside the house and inside the compound. But why are they doing it? <laughs> so we had a, a very good family Sangamam, you know, uh, 12 years back or so. And then at that time I spoke to everybody. I did not know my cousins, uh, you know, walking of life. I respect him because he identified a gap, he's making money and he's making himself successful and we have to give a round of applause to him. So every aspect of business,
whether a small shop wala or a poultry farm or a repair person, we should start respecting them because they are thinking differently. There is no textbook rule for success. If there is a textbook rule, everybody will be successful. No, there is no textbook rule. So if they are successful, you appreciate them. So one thing I do, these days I go to India, my son and I decided, of course, my wife is also there. We buy only from small shops. Doesn't matter. We need to support them. And whatever coins we have, we collect in a thing and we keep in our car or in a bag and we give it to people. And my, I was so happy when my son was doing it. And we decided 50% of them will not go to the right people, but the remaining 50% will go to the right people and let us help them, okay? So this is a greater good that we can really consider, okay? So uh, you can really do the target costing. What will be the you know, cost at any stage, price at this stage, gross profit margin, at that stage this is an equation that you can use. So I'm not going into the depth of that. Now we have to do what is known as sensitivity analysis of net present value to changes in the development cost. So make an incremental change to the development cost and hold all other factors constant. And that is one part. The other is development time sensitivities. How the development time is changed, increase, then how much you lose, how much percentage of your uh, net present value will be impacted. So this is a technique uh, to uh, used in new product development, sensitivity analysis. How the changes in one or more factors impact the overall outcome of the project. So this can be done using mathematical models, okay? Do some simulations. So you can identify factors uh, which, has, uh, which have uh, greatest impact on the success of the product then it can be used, that information will be made, used to make decisions and how to allocate resources, what could be the risk, et cetera, okay? All right, so we'll see that, okay? Now, so more, identify the most important factors, make better decisions, reduce the risk of failure. That is how it is uh, positioned, okay? So there is what is known as a tornado diagram. So you, you risk one, two, three, four, five, six, just one minute. Yeah, so you identify risk one, two, three, six, something like that. And if you, whether if you change the risk, how this risk will impact negatively, positively. Each risk will have different levels of impact, positively or negatively, okay? If you, if you increase that or decrease it, how it will happen. So then you can really create a kind of uh, bar chart in a, a diagram wherein uh, different, uh, you know, uh, bars will re represent different risk. And uh, the, the risk with the highest is put at the top and then lowest at the bottom. So it will look like a tornado, okay? That's a very interesting one. And sometimes what happens is that, uh, it is something like a recipe, okay? The same sambar in India, you go to anywhere, they're all different. So Kerala sambar is different from Tamil Nadu sambar. And within Kerala, the South Indian sambar is different from the middle part of Malabar where I come from, it is different from the North part. Now, you take some families, the sambar varies again, okay? It could be purely a change in chili, or a change in uh, salt or the recipe ingredients itself. So the Southern Kerala ingredient is different from the Malabar region. 
In Malgo region, we add coconut, grated coconut, and we fry it, add the spices, and that is grind into a paste and we add it to the sambar, which is not done in Tamil Nadu, which is not done anywhere else. So it is unique. So now, if you want to make a uh, you know, shop to sell sambar, of course, you have other things also, which sambar you choose. And if coconut price is going up, and if I have to use coconut grated paste to be part of the sambar, if I have to really, whether I can include this much, say coconut paste or little more or more, and how that will impact my cost and how much I have to charge to my, uh, you know, when I mean to my customers. And there is a nearby shop which is not using the sambar, I'm sorry, not using the coconut in the sambar. They're using a South Kerala sambar or a Tamil Nadu sambar selling at uh, say, for the sake of, you know, uh, explanation one rupee. Then with coconut, you have to sell it at 120, but there's a possibility that people go to the one rupee sambar. You may lose market. Then how much you can add how much, how, how you can do that? You want to make a uniqueness by having coconut. Change something else, reduce it and have compensate for it. That is a trade-off. I hope that, that explains a lot, right? So you may have different strategies. So you may have a strategy A where I may have, you know, 50% of the grated coconut and I, uh, there's uh, less from the the fifty percentage is removed, but then I add something else. So uh, so my wife adds uh, what is known as uh, the ta tamarind, you know, tamarind part, a bit of it. So you increase a bit of tamarind or decrease it, and you compensate for it. That is one strategy. The another strategy is you increase the coconut and reduce the tamarind, and then you have strategy B. So then how the risk will be? how it will be attractive. That's where new recipes are found, amazingly. Okay? And so you can have such recipes in your product development. So you have to see the value of it and which strategy you have to go for it, okay? So you have to identify the factors having greatest impact on the outcome, outcome meaning success, customers, sales, et cetera, okay? And then, Compare the different scenarios and see how changes in one factor will affect the other factors. Then make decisions. Then communicate the results of sensitivity analysis, helpful for stakeholders who may not be familiar with the technical details of the analysis. So, you know, when I go to Kerala, there are places where you should eat dosha, the pancake. And there are places where you should take idli, you know, rice cake. And there are places you know, in Trivandrum, there is a place, oh, you don't believe this. It has come in the, one of the uh, food bloggers in the world from US, he came. And just for 500 rupees, you get unlimited feast. Four or five ISMs, the dessert, various kinds, and 30, 40 side items. Oh my goodness, it's vegetarian. You know how much is their uh, waste per day? Two tons, two tons, because your plant and leaf and everything, two tons, two tons. So imagine the volume of their you know, business, okay? So they could communicate that. So I went there one day, uh, my son came and I went for a government meeting. I went there, I was staying in a hotel nearby this uh, place and uh, I had taken my lunch. So I went there to, uh, uh, from with my son to take his lunch. Then somebody asked me, uh, sir, you are not taking food. No, I have taken food. But sir, you can have some paisam. It is on our, uh, on company. You don't need to pay for it. Then he served me two or three small paisams. I said, I don't want too much. My stomach is full. Give me a little bit of that. They gave it. You know why? That's marketing. <laughs> I'll go there again, and I'm talking to you. Whenever you go to, uh, uh, you know, Trivandrum, you should eat that. Mother's Choice or something of that kind. Amazing one, amazing one. So you should communicate properly. Okay? 
So now we are coming uh, to the, you know, uh, e example uh, uh, of, a, uh, of a, a simple system. We all know hammer, right? This is called the Stanley hammer, okay? It's a, so you have a wooden part or non-metallic part and a metallic part. And it is designed in 1995 by product Genesis for Stanley Tools. Uh, great, uh, uh, great M was a contractor, graphite composite shaft, soft rubber grip, okay, grip, okay? So this is it. Now, so there is a, uh, uh, you know, form and function, and uh, there is an article about it, okay? And uh, very interesting fiberglass handle in 1954, solid steel hammer in 26, now Stanley Tools uh, offering an evolutionary grip. So it was in 1995, not very far off by the way. Okay, so very uniqueness. Now um, I will do one thing. So this is uh, because there is some audio related to this, you know, animation that makes a lot of sound. So just like uh, earlier I mentioned um, the, the development costs and timing, testing costs, and I think you have to really, this is a base values uh, given, okay? Base values, okay? This is based on certain assumptions, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so now we need to see how this we can use. So, uh, Let me take the Excel sheet and then I'll go to the video prepared by uh, Abhijit, one minute. 